What's up guys, we've got the Fujifilm X-T4 here and today I'm going to teach you how to use that camera to do some focus stacking and focus bracketing using the new automated feature found on the X-T4. So let's get started. So the Fujifilm X-T4 now has a great auto feature in the focus bracketing menu. In the past, you had to manually select how many frames you wanted the camera to take. Now all you have to do is set it to the auto feature and select your nearest and furthest point that you want in focus and the camera will take care of the rest. So this is going to be a great feature for those of you that like to do a lot of focus stacking, whether it's for macro work or for landscape photography. And I think it's going to be a real benefit to you guys out in the field. So let's show you how to do that. What I'll do today is I'll run through the menu system and how to set the camera up. And then we'll get those files into Photoshop. And also I'll try out Helicon Focus, which is new to me. And we'll show you how to stack those images to get images that are sharp from front to back. Okay, so we have our shot set up of our drone here. Today we want to get the front of the drone all the way to the back of the drone in focus. So the first thing you want to do is set the actual physical command dial uh, or the physical drive dial to bracket. So make sure it's set to BKT. It's really important that you set the physical dial to bracket because if it's not, it's not going to give you all of the files that you need to stack for the focus stacking. So Again, very important step. Make sure step number one, you set it to bracket. You can see we're using a setting of f5.6. So we'll assume that 5.6 is our sharpest aperture. And you can see here that 5.6 is not going to get us sharp from front to back. Even if we stop down to something like f16, we're probably not going to get all the way from front to back in focus there. So we have to resort to focus stacking. So now we're going to dive into the menu here. First thing you're going to do is select drive setting and bracket setting and bracket select. You can see you'll have all these options here for the different types of brackets. So you want to select focus bracket, which is all the way at the bottom. So click OK on that. Next, you'll move all the way down to focus bracket and you have manual and auto. Now manual is something that's found in the X-T3 also. And it's also found in the X-T30, X-T2, and I think a few other older um, Fujifilm cameras. But for the Fujifilm X-T4, the new feature we have is Auto. So we want to click Auto and OK. And make sure you select 0 for the interval, unless you're using some kind of strobe or you know there's going to be some kind of movement in between your shots, go ahead and select 0. So we'll click OK on that. And now what it's doing is it's asking you to select point A. So you can see with point A, I move my focus ring back and forth and you can see that A moving back and forth there. So what we want to do is first focus on the nearest point of the drone, uh, the closest point to us. So we'll zoom in on that. And I'm using manual focus. So make sure your camera's on manual focus. And I'm also using focus peaking. So make sure your focus peaking is turned on. So we start there and that looks to be in focus with the contrast. Now we'll click OK. And now it's asking uh, for us to pick point B. So you can see now when we rotate the focus ring that B is moving there. So what we'll do is zoom back out. And now let's zoom back in all the way in the back of the camera here. And let's make sure that that back propeller is focused. So that looks good there. We'll click OK. And now we'll click back. Basically, you'll just now have to trust that the focus bracketing has been set properly. It doesn't really give you any confirmation. So you do have to trust that the camera is going to do its thing. Make sure your two second timer is on and then we'll go ahead and release the shutter. So let's give it a try. Here we go. OK, so it's rolling. It looks like it decided to take 18 shots and just like that it's done. So once you have your files, we'll go ahead and bring it over into Photoshop and we'll show you how to stack it there. So let's take it into Photoshop. Now before you bring your photos into Photoshop, we're going to have to export them. So bring them into your preferred raw editor. Today I'm using Capture One. If you like to use Lightroom, you can use that too. Um, let me show you here first. I'm going to unselect this file here. 
And if we go through our drone shots, you can see on this first photo here, we can see that the front part is in pretty good focus there. And when we pull it all the way back, we can see the rear of the drone is out of focus. And now we see the last shot. We can see now on this one, the rear of the drone is in focus and the front of the drone is out of focus. So that's where the focus stacking is gonna help us out. And that focus stack technique is gonna get us that image tack sharp from front to back. So the first thing you'll do is let's select all these files to be exported. And today we'll export them here in Capture One as full-size TIFFs. So we'll go to File and let's scroll down here to Export Images. And here we'll select our file, make sure they're in the same folder so that you can find them easily. For today's purposes, I'll just keep it at 50% just to make the files a little bit smaller and easier to process. So we'll click export and once the files have exported, we'll go ahead and open them in Photoshop. So while we're waiting for the files to export, let's go ahead and open Photoshop. Okay, now we're in Photoshop and we're ready to start our stack here. So go to file and we'll go to scripts. After scripts, you want to go to load files into stack. And then we'll go ahead and browse for our files here. So go to browse. Here we have the drone focus stack. Select all the files by clicking the first one, holding down shift, and then click on the bottom file so you can select all of the files and click open. Now it gives us the option to attempt to automatically align source images or create a smart object. So what we want to do is go ahead and just automatically align them and click OK. And we'll let Photoshop do its thing. And once it's loaded, we'll go ahead and start the next step. Okay, so the files are loaded. Uh, again, let's show you what it looks like here. We can see our first file, the front of the drone is in focus. And we move to the back of the drone here and you can see it's out of focus. Now we go to our final file and we can see here on our final file, the back is in focus there and the front of the drone is out of focus. So let's open our files all up here and start the next process. When we opened our files, we chose to automatically align them. So that step is taken care of. Uh, now what you wanna do is select all your files here on the side. So select all the layers. And once you select all the layers, you're gonna go back to the top to edit. And then you're gonna click auto blend. And you can see now you have the option for stack images or panorama. So make sure stack images is selected. And then check here, seamless tones and colors. So make sure that box is checked and now you'll click OK. And you can see Photoshop tells you it's gonna blend selected layers based on content. So let's just go ahead and let it do its thing. It's gonna take a while, depending on how many files you have, it does take a little bit of time. Okay, so it looks like Photoshop has processed it. And now let's take a look. You can see now front to back, everything is in focus. I'm gonna zoom in here and let's just drag it. And we're in 100%. You can see the front, the camera, the gimbal on the drone is in focus. You can see some of the uh, dirty marks here on the drone. That's in focus too. The middle of the drone is good. You can zoom in a little bit more and we can see Mavic 2 is in sharp focus there. And all the way to the back propellers, which is the B point that we chose, is also in focus. Uh, maybe this back right propeller on the drone uh, left on your screen is not in focus. So that's something that you do have to take into account. Um, you know, when you're taking these photos out in the field, make sure you check your first and last images, and then you can take some safety shots just to bracket a little bit more in case it's something that needs a few more frames to get you that entire object in focus. So it's not foolproof, but you can see it does a very good job for a general purpose. This can be very useful for people doing product photography or just getting into macro photography where they want everything to be in sharp focus from front to back. Again, with landscape photography, it's a little bit easier. A lot of times in landscape photography, you don't need as many frames because your subjects are a little bit further from the lens. So just remember in landscape photography, it's not always necessary to focus stack. But again, if you do want that prominent foreground like a plant or a rock in focus all the way to the background or mountains to infinity, 
this is where focus stacking will help you. Now let's give it a try in Helicon Focus. So I'll go ahead and open up Helicon Focus. Okay, so here we are in Helicon Focus. You can see at the top here, it says trial. Uh, I basically just downloaded this trial to film this video and I wanted to try it out myself. I've heard a lot of good things about Helicon Focus. Uh, and that it does work better than Photoshop. I'm very new to using Helicon Focus, so I'm just gonna show you the basic render on this to see how well of a job it does with these files that we took here today. You can see here on the front part of the program, it already tells you to just add source images by dragging them. So let's go ahead and find our files. So we found our files here, and now we're gonna just go ahead and select all of the those files. So again, you wanna just click the top, click Shift, and click the bottom file and then just go ahead and drag those files over. I didn't really read the instructions or play with this piece of software too much, but uh, I did do a quick tutorial. Basically, they just told you to drag it in and then click the render button, telling you that the default settings actually work pretty good. So let's see how that does for these files here. So we can see all our files are uh, imported into Helicon Focus. And now we'll just go ahead and click render and see how it does. So you can see this nice graphic, it's doing its thing. And let's see, okay, let's zoom in. Did it do much better than Photoshop? Um, I would say it did just about the same job there. You can see our left side here is the non-focus stack image. And we go to the right and we see the focus stacked image. So again, you can see that difference it makes all the way to the back and then the front as well as the middle of the drone, they are all in focus. Not an in-depth interview on Helicon Focus, but I can tell you just from this basic example that it does work really well. I'm sure just like Photoshop, if there are parts that are out of focus and you need to retouch it, there's gonna be some tools on that. So that's probably something to explore for another video. Uh, but for this video, I think that's gonna give us a good example to get us started. So I hope you found this video useful and you can now use that focus stacking and bracketing technique out in the field with your new X-T4. It's a really fun technique to use. Probably you don't wanna overuse it, but uh, it is fun when you want to get that foreground in focus all the way to the background and get some cool shots like that. Well, that's all I have for this video today, guys. Again, thanks for joining me. If you haven't already, make sure to click subscribe and click the notification bell for more photo tips, tricks, and camera gear reviews. As a reminder, in the future, I am going to make some editing videos start to finish, so make sure you tune in for those as well. Until next time, thanks for watching and take care. We'll see you soon.